the long Arctic days can be surprisingly warm, though no one, least of all a caribou mother, should rely on that. 90% of all the calves are born within five days of each other. The first calves are often dropped before their mothers reach the main calving grounds. This gives predators a chance. The fox is looking for a sickly or stillborn infant. With these early calves, the cows are torn between motherhood and moving on. Some calves inevitably get separated and left behind. No cow will accept a calf other than her own. Once a calf loses its mother, it's doomed. The youngster on the left has temporarily lost its own mother and is soon sent packing. This calf, only hours old, weighed about 13 pounds at birth. On its mother's milk, it will double its weight within 10 days. A calf can walk within an hour of being born. Within three or four hours, it can keep up with its mother. Though the calf will start grazing on its second day of life, its mother will continue to suckle it for a long time, even during the return journey to the wintering grounds in the autumn. The tundra is a wet, inhospitable place to begin life. The caribou calf isn't born in a warm burrow like a parker squirrel. As many as 40% of the calves born each spring will not survive to be yearlings. In exceptionally bad years, the death rate can rise to 90%. The location of the main calving grounds varies from season to season. Some years it's in the Yukon in Canada, but the next year it may be over the US border in Alaska. No one can tell why the caribou choose these particular spots to drop their calves. Often they seem to pick bleak, exposed hillsides instead of the nearby valleys where the food plants are apparently more enticing. But then caribou are mysterious animals, as unpredictable as the north land in which they live. Caribou, it's been said, are the wild spirit of the north land. Four or five days after their calves are born, the cows shed their antlers. This mother, watching her growing youngster flex his muscles, has already lost hers. 